Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. This is the topic of properties and convolution for ESE 563 digital signal processing. The learning outcomes for this topic is at the end of this topic, the students should be able to first derive properties of Z transform. Second is to apply inverse Z transform for given problems and the third one is soft convolution of finite sequences using Z transform method. All the slides used in this video are based on the monograph by Dr. Hazli Hashim. There are a few properties of Z transform. Uh, the Z transform is a very powerful tool for the study of discrete time signals and systems. The power of this transform is a consequence of some very important properties uh, as shown in this table. That the transform possess. In this section, we examine some of these properties. Just as with the discrete time Fourier transform, there are a number of important and useful Z transform properties. A few of these properties are described in the table like linearity, time shifting, frequency scaling, multiplication by N. Initial value theorem, final value theorem, and the last one is convolution. This is the example of linearity. If we have xn equal to 3 multiplied 2 with the power of n minus 4 multiplied 3 with the power of n, multiply u and the uh, unit step, this one can be equalized to the linear function as ax1n plus bx2n. In this case, if x1 equal to x, x1n equal to x1z and x2n equal to x2z, then uh, this equation ax1n plus bx2n is equal to ax1z plus bx2z. The linearity uh, property is valid for any constants a and b in the equation. For example, in this case, a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4. The linearity property can easily be generalized for an arbitrary number of signals. Basically, it implies that uh, the Z transform of a linear combination of signals is the same linear combination of their Z transform. Thus, the linearity property helps us to find the Z transform of a signal by expressing the signal as a sum of elementary signals for each of which the Z transform is already known. So, back to this example. So, we know that the uh, closed form uh, of A with the power of N, when we transform into Z transform, we have this one, Z over Z minus 2 with the constant 3. Same goes to this one. We have 3 with the power of N. So, in Z transform, we have Z divided by Z minus 3 with a constant B equal to 4. So, for this one, if we rearrange in this format, we have this. 3 over 1 minus 2 Z with the power of negative 1 and minus 4 divided by 1 minus 3 multiply with the z with the power of minus 1. So, for x1, the region of conversion for z, okay, this is magnitude of z, must be larger than 2. And for x2, the region of converg convergence for z must be larger than 3. So, for these two function of the linearity, we conclude that the region of convergence for xn after we convert to x z is z larger than 3. So, we refer to this region of convergence for x1 z. Since z larger than 2, so the shaded area must be larger than radius of 2. For ROC for x2 z, 
The region of convergence must be larger than radius of 3. So this is the shaded area that larger than 3. So the conclusion, which is the overall region of convergence for this equation, xz, is larger than 3. So we pick the highest radius uh, among these two, x1z and x2z, as the region, converge, region of convergence for this equation.